Assalamu alaikum everyone. Right, Ms. Iman has kindly asked me to give you guys a talk about reading, okay, and how important it is in Islam. I said to her, it's such a big topic, it's going to take me hours and hours, so you guys are going to be here for, you know, for the rest of the day. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> Only joking. Right, reading in Islam, boys and girls, is a duty. Seeking knowledge, getting an education, coming to school is a duty that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us upon every male and female whether you're a boy or a girl you still have a duty to go to school and learn okay and that's why we're here at school everyone learns students learn and teachers learn as well we learn from you sometimes believe it or not okay so we all come to school for the purpose and for the intention of seeking an education learning Learning makes you grow. And when you grow, you become more educated and you start to think better. Okay? Every day when you come to school, boys and girls, you should say to yourself, I'm going to learn something new from my teacher today. Whatever it is. Okay? Maybe how to spell better, you know, bigger words, how to read bigger words, how to make more friends, how to be more attentive in class, how to, how to socialize better with my friends, how to be kind. Okay? Every day, when you come to school, when your parents bring you to school, you should have this in mind. How could I learn more today? Okay? And the first thing that we should learn, boys and girls, is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? How can we learn about Allah more? Okay? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is caring. He loves us. He cares for us. Yeah? He gives us our parents that look after us. He gives us kind teachers that teach us and spend a lot of time with us, showing us right from wrong, telling us this is right, you can't do this is right, you can do it, this is wrong, you shouldn't do it. Okay? So we should be always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever He's given us. He's given us so much. He's given us friends, He's given us brothers and sisters at home, He's given us aunties and uncles. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all of that. He gives us rain, water to drink, gives us food. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we have to learn about Allah. Okay? Also, we have to learn about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is the one who teaches us about Allah. It's through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we got, we got to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should learn from him as well. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'm going to end with this hadith, boys and girls, he says, a person who acquires knowledge, a person who goes and seeks knowledge, learns, goes to school every day, has learned a lot, has gained a lot of things. And he says, and if anyone is going on his way in search of knowledge, when he comes to school every day to learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy for you the road to paradise. Okay? Because when you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know what to do. Okay? A person without knowledge, boys and girls, is like a person walking on a track, okay, in complete darkness. He doesn't know the way. Because it's he doesn't know he doesn't have any knowledge. He's walking in darkness. He can't see anything. So it's very likely for him that he'll trip over something or get lost along the way. Yeah? But knowledge gives us power, gives us strength, gives us the know the know how. So how can we so we know how to do things, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, teaching us that we should always ask for knowledge. He says, Rabbi zidni ilma, which means, Oh Allah, increase us in knowledge. Allahumma amin. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Thank you, Mr. Nasrallah. Now, welcome to everyone to this year's National Simultaneous Storytime. Firstly, I would like to explain to those who are unfamiliar with this event a little bit of what it is all about. I shall now quote from the Australian Library and Information Association, the website. National Simultaneous Storytime is an important annual event that aims to encourage more young Australians to read and enjoy books. Now it's in its 14th successful year, it is a colourful, vibrant, fun event that aims to promote the value of reading and literacy using an Australian 
children's book that explores age-appropriate themes and addresses key learning areas of the national curriculum from grades prep to six and the preschool early learning years framework. Every year, a picture book written and illustrated by an Australian author and illustrator is read simultaneously in libraries, schools, preschools, childcare centres, family homes, bookshops and many other places around the country. I'm happy to say that this is, event is joyfully become a tradition at our school. This is our fourth year and hope to participate in many more, inshallah. This year, the book that was chosen is called Too Many Elephants in This House, written by Ursula Dobrowski and illustrated by Andrew Joyner. You can check it up on Google if you like. Published by the Pullman Group and presented to you by Grade 3D. We hope you enjoy the production. Let's begin. elephants in this house. In Eric's house there were too many elephants. There was an elephant in the living room. There was an elephant in the kitchen. There was an elephant in the hallway. There was an elephant in the bathroom. There was even an elephant in Eric's bedroom. Sometimes a whole herd of them. One day, Eric's mother said, There are too many elephants in this house. They've got to go. No, not my elephants. Eric loved his elephants, every single one. The elephant in the living room helped him build towers with his blocks. The elephant in the kitchen was good at making toast. He could play hide and seek with the elephant in the hallway. Hmm. Found you. The elephant in the bathroom always reminded him to brush his teeth. And the elephants in his bedroom sang him to sleep at night. Eric's mother said, I can't move for all these elephants. But what could Eric do? <laughs> he could take the elephants to the zoo. But there were already enough elephants in the zoo. <laughs> he could take them back to Africa. Could he ever get that many elephants on a plane? Or well, he could just leave the back gate open at night and let all the elephants escape. Eric decided he better not do that. Finally, he had just the right idea. He found a very, 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 very big box. Now, 
He cut. He cut a hole in the top for a chimney. He cut a hole in the back for a window. He cut another hole for the front for a door. Look, elephant, said Eric. The elephants looked. They wondered. It's a house, said Eric. Just for you. Of course, an elephant house just for elephants. One by one, in a long elephant line, all the elephants went into the elephant house. When the last elephant was inside, Eric shut the door. There's not too many elephants in this house, Eric said. After that, whenever he wanted to play with the elephants, Eric would just go to the door and shout, Come on out, elephants! And out they came, ready for anything. to 3D. Thank you, 3D. You can come down now. Thank you, 3D. Thank you, everyone. Before uppers are dismissed for the recess and the rest.